Hi, I'm Melissa Carruthers from the Severn Sound Environmental Association, and this presentation is going to focus on the Drinking Water Source Protection Program under the Clean Water Act. Stay tuned to learn more. So let's get started. To start at the very beginning, what is source water? As the slide states, source water is the water from streams, lakes, rivers, or underground aquifers used to supply private and public drinking water systems. It comes from two sources, surface or groundwater. And when we talk about the Drinking Water Source Protection Program, it is the protection of municipal drinking water sources from overuse and contamination. The Drinking Water Source Protection Program gets its power from the Clean Water Act, which is provincial legislation. It is the first step in Ontario's multi-barrier approach to protect municipal drinking water sources. Although source water fits into provincial legislation, it's being implemented across the province on a local level through local source protection plans. There are 19 source protection regions in the province, and we are a part of the South Georgian Bay Lake Simcoe Source Protection Region. This region is over 10,000 square kilometers in size, consists of 52 municipalities, and has the greatest number of municipal drinking water systems of all the regions across the province, approximately one third. Within the South Georgian Bay Lake Simcoe region, there are also source protection areas and authorities. In our region, those consist of the Severn Sound Environmental Association, Lake Simcoe Region Conservation Authority, and Nottawasaga Valley Conservation Authority. Severn Sound Environmental Association is one of the two non-conservation authorities who have been given the honor of operating as a source protection authority. There are two key vulnerable areas that were created as part of the source protection process. They are called wellhead protection areas or WAPAs and intake protection zones or IPZs. WAPAs are areas surrounding a municipal well and the size of them is determined by how quickly water travels underground to the municipal well and is measured in years. Very similar, an intake protection zone is the area of, on the water and land surrounding a municipal surface water intake. The size of each zone is determined by how quickly water flows to the intake in hours. A key thing to note about the program is that it only applies in one of these two areas. A few other vulnerable areas are highly vulnerable aquifers and significant groundwater recharge areas. There are no policies in the local source protection plan to regulate threats in these areas as our plan only deals with significant drinking water threats based on provincial guidelines. Threats in these two areas can only be low or moderate. There are 22 prescribed drinking water threats under the Clean Water Act, which are addressed through the Drinking Water Source Protection Program. 20 of those deal with impacts on water quality and two deal with water quantity. The threats span multiple sectors, such as municipal, industrial, residential and agricultural, so nobody is really exempt. So how is source water protected? A source protection plan is a document that contains a range of policies that aim to manage and eliminate existing and future significant drinking water threats within local vulnerable areas. As previously mentioned, each source protection region has its own local source protection plan. On the screen is an example of how the plan and policies are laid out. On the left hand side of the screen is the front page of the source protection plan. And on the right is an example of threat number 15, which is related to the handling and storage of fuel. However, they are all laid out the same. They start with a definition or text for context purposes and have a summary chart of what circumstances would be required to result in a significant drinking water threat. That is followed by the policies around that threat, which include who has to implement them. So who is responsible for protecting source water? The Region Source Protection Committee created our source protection plan. It's their responsibility to evaluate and update it. It is the responsibility of the Source Protection Authority staff to monitor source water activities, provide education and outreach support materials, as well as support implementing bodies. The risk management official or inspector 
is responsible for working with landowners to identify and mitigate the risk to municipal supplies. Municipal staff are responsible for coordinating with their risk management official or inspector if development is occurring on a property located in a vulnerable area, as well as implementing additional policies such as septic reinspection. And finally, source protection flows right down to property owners and managers, developers and builders, to ensure they are making responsible choices in vulnerable areas. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed learning about the Drinking Water Source Protection Program. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Also, for more information, make sure to check out our website at www.severnsound.ca, follow us on Instagram at severnsoundea, on Twitter at SSEA underscore SSRAP, and make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Bye for now and remember, a clean glass of water starts long before you turn on the tap.